Hello everyone, my name is Ausa and this is lesson number 11 in the course uh, Let's Learn Icelandic or Kennslistend nummer 11 i namskeðinu Lærum Íslensku And today we are doing the final, final, final lesson about the pronunciation of individual Icelandic letters. And I think it's a good, good way to end, is to end with the very Icelandic letters, thot and eð. Let's just start with the letter thot, the letter thot. And I think this is the first thing to learn, is that even though the letter thot is spelled like this, it's spelled like thor, thorn, Thorn, it's not called thorn. So if you are an American and an English speaker, you will likely pronounce this as, as thorn, but this is not how we pronounce it. We pronounce it as thot. Because as we covered in the end lesson, an R between, in front of an N, this will uh, give this sort of a rough N, and you will say thot, thot with your nose. The R, the R sound in daily speak, in daily speak the R sound is almost not there. It's just this rough double N sound. Thot. So now we know the name of the letter. So uh, what else should I teach you about it? First of all, the letter thot. It is only at the beginning of words. Okay? Only at the beginning of words. Or at, alternatively, if you have a composite word that is made up of more than one word, it could be that the second base word starts with a thot, but is always at the beginning of a word. So if you know, if you if if you see it in the middle of the word, you will automatically know that this is a composite word, and the next base word starts at the place where the letter thot starts. Only, only, only at the beginning of words. Then how to pronounce it? It's very simple, I would say. I don't think anyone would have uh, problems with this and is always pronounced the same. So what you do is you put your tongue in between, between your teeth, like and you just blow. That's all to it, there's nothing more. It's just And the important thing is that you don't put any voice to it. So there's no voice, so it's not it's not it's just just plain and simple, like uh, Thor in English, I would say, uh, which in Icelandic, in the name of the god is Thor. Thor. And this is also a normal, very normal, very common, like a male name, Thor, especially as a second name. It's, I think, probably one of the most common second male names in Icelandic, I would guess. It's very, very common. So it's very, very normal to meet a guy that's called Thor. Thor. And then there are many other words that start with the letter thot. Uh, one example is thoka. Thoka. And this means fog. And another word is, for example, uh, af thora. I think that's a good, good, this is a good word. Af thora. And this means to have the courage to do something. So to dare, but it's more like I, I have the courage to do this. Ég þori. Uh, and the verb is af þora. So many, many words and it's quite common, but always at the beginning of the words. And it has never double. You will never, ever, ever see a double, uh, double thought. So if this happened, then you know that somebody made the typo because not even in composite words, because it's only at the beginning. So thought, always single and uh, only at the beginning of the word. Now we're up to the letter F, the letter F. And uh, this is almost opposite to thought in the sense that this can never be at the beginning of words. So F is never in the beginning of words. It's only at the min middle of the words or at the end of words never in the beginning, and you can never have double F. Okay, so the difference in pronunciation of F and thought is, or thought and death is sort of like the difference between S and Z, I would say. So when you do S, it's just like S, but when you do Z, it's like Z. So you put the voice into it when you do the Z. And also, Traditionally, so the basic pronunciation of the word th is, is, is more voiced compared to the thought. So, so for example, uh, in the word maður, so it's more like the English word there. 
So here you can either put your tongue slightly between your lips, not between your teeth, but you can also leave it more pressed up against the back of your teeth. So you can say th or th. It depends a bit. Sometimes you do a little bit like a th and sometimes a little bit like a th. It depends a little bit on the word and the context, but the sound is generally like this. An example is, like I said before, the word mother. Mother, and this means uh, a man. Some other examples are the word uh, mother, which means mother, and father, father, which means father. Okay, so you can see that the F is slightly more like voiced compared to the thought, it's like. V like mother, mother, father. However, however, if you have if at the end of the word, then we don't really put so much voice into it. Then it almost sounds like a thought, honestly, most of the time. So an example of this is the word bath, bath. And here you can say that you cannot really tell a really strong difference between a thought and an S. Bath. But you will always know that it's an S and not a thought because thought can only be at the beginning of words. Uh, however, if we look at a different case of the same word, like a different case of the word bath is bade. And here, since it's not at the end anymore, then we put more voice into it. I will repeat bade. Hér er í baði. So, ég, hér er bað. Ég er í baði. So, here it's more voiced. Another example of word where eð is at the end is, it, for example, the name of the letter, which is eð. Then you might not always hear the voice. Sometimes it's eð, sometimes it's eð. It's a little bit more flexible, let's say, when we're at the end. And another, another super important word in Icelandic, maybe the most common word in, a, in the language, is the word af, af, and this means to, in the sense that when, in, and I'm sure you've seen this already throughout the entire course so far, now when the English say to in front of a verb, like to be, to go, to blah 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 blah, in Icelandic, we used the, the word af. Af vera, af vilja, af fara, etc. Et so, af is a very, very common word that is used a lot. So, when the use goes beyond aren't only this. So, it's very, very common. Af. Af. And then, of course, we have a very useful, let's end with that, we have a very useful word that has both thought and eth, and this is the word thath, thath, and this means it. So it in English is thath in Icelandic. That's all, thath and eth, now you know, let's get on to the homework. Let's start the homework with a very simple question. First of all, which one letter can never be the first letter of a word and which can only be the first letter of a word? If you need time to think, just press the pause button, but otherwise I'm going to give you the result now. The letter thought can only be the first letter in a word or alternatively the first letter of a base word in a composite longer word. And the letter eth can never be the first letter. Now, like always, let's go over the words that we discussed in this lesson. Uh, try to see if you remember how to pronounce them and also if you can guess the meaning of at least some of them. Now press the pause button and take all the time that you need. Now I'm going to assume that you did this and help you along. The first word is uh, thot, thot, and this is the name of the letter thot, 
which is the first letter of this word. The second word is Thor, Thor, which is the Icelandic version of the name Thor, of the famous thunder god Thor, or like we say in Icelandic, Þrumuguðin Thor. Þoka, Þoka means fog, af Þora, af Þora means to have the courage to do something. Then we're up to the second column and we start with the word eth, eth, and this is the name of the letter eth, which is the second letter of this word eth. Then we have the word maður, maður, which means a man. Móðir, móðir, which means mother. Fáðir, fáðir, which means father. And then the third column uh, is on the top is the word bath. Bath, which means a bath. And then the phrase ég er í baði. Ég er í baði, which means literally I am in a bath, but in English it's more natural to say I'm taking a bath. Ég er í baði. Then we have the word ath, ath, and this is the equivalent of the English to in front of verbs, like to be, ath vera, to go, ath fara. But be slightly careful that the translation is not one-to-one. -one. When uh, two is used in other contexts, we would not use of in the same way. But in the context, context of being in front of verbs, it's almost exactly the same. Of or two. Finally, we have the very useful word thaf. Thaf. And this means it. That is all. Now you know the very Icelandic letters uh, thot and if. Thank you very much and see you in the next lesson. Bless, bless.